Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've got quite a fun one for you. We're going to be going through the process of creating this commission, which was really interesting because I used airbrush for the background with acrylic paints and I used colour pencils and solvents for the main subject. So it was a really interesting and fun process and I can't wait to take you along with me. Now let's make a start on that background. So I've got my beloved Awata CMSB 0.18 nozzle size airbrush. I absolutely love this thing. I've had it for quite a long time, but it's been broken and I've had to get some replacement parts, which are insanely expensive. But um, I could not wait to use it for this commission because the outfocus back focus background was just begging for the airbrush. So I was using my masking film to mark out where the edge of the dress was so I could get a nice clean line and didn't get any of the paint on the dress. I then tried to cut it out on some corrugated cardboard, which was not a good idea because you need a really flat surface if you're going to use a craft knife to cut this. So I ended up going over to some nail scissors which are really small and delicate and they've got that curve to them which was perfect for getting in all the nooks and crannies of my stencil masking tape. This stuff is absolutely great, it sticks to the paper and you can reuse it plenty of times for smaller areas after you've cut it. The paints I'm going to be using in the airbrush are the Aero Colour Schmincke Acrylic Inks, don't know if I said that right, but they are absolutely amazing these paints, they're much more fluid than normal acrylic paints so you can't just use normal paints in the airbrush. And I drop a few drops of that paint into the fluid cup of the airbrush. This is a dual action airbrush so you, you pull down the trigger for the, the air to come out and then you pull back the trigger for the amount of paint you want to come out. So I just mix the colour in the little cup and then test out on a piece of white paper to see if the colour is the right colour for what I want. And you can then just keep adjusting the colour right inside the cup, adding drops of the other paints to get a warmer or cooler tone. And I'm then just going ahead and spraying directly onto the pastel matte paper. This is the light grey colour. Um, I've never actually used this on pastel matte before and the only thing I found was that it does go a little bit darker than if you were to do it on like a white surface for example of wood. I just changed my cup out to the bigger cup because I felt like there wasn't enough paint room to mix the colours I wanted and this was quite a big area to fill. The only annoying thing about the airbrush is that there's so many troubleshooting issues you can have so the paint will dry on the nozzle, there's all sorts of blockages inside and it is a bit of a pain in the bum to use to be honest but it is I think the, the funness of using this tool far outweighs the fact that it's a massive pain. Um, <laughs> sometimes you just have to clean it about 100 times a day. It has moods as well, like one day it will be absolutely fine, the next day you'll have to clean it 100 times before it actually works properly. And this is one of the most expensive ones as well, so it should work. My boyfriend bought me some snacks to fuel my 12 hour painting session on that day. Can you even believe how satisfying this step was, peeling off that stencil and revealing that crisp line? Just when you thought peeling off the tape at the end of the drawing was satisfying. Look at this. <laughs> and here we have our nice clean background all done and after this I did go in with some coloured pencils and a few pan pastels just to neutralise some areas and add some little pops of colour. And the pan pastels went over this pretty well. So now onto the not so fun part of using an airbrush. After you've used it you have to clean every single part and take it apart and then put it back together. I used 99% isopropyl alcohol to do this and then I put him back to bed ready for next time. And that's the first day complete. Now on to the next day, we've got lots of natural light coming in, in the morning which is always lovely and we're going to be making a start on the dress. My next door neighbour's cat that I always beg to be my friend because I have no more animals in the house anymore. Putting my coloured pencils into the drawer and pouring out my pencil blend zest it solvent which we're going to be using with a paintbrush to blend out the coloured pencils. But not before bothering next door neighbour's cat a little bit more and then saving the first of about 100 insects that come into my conservatory with a butterfly net. I've been looking forward to drawing this dress ever since I got the reference photo, it's just stunning and I want it for my wedding if I ever have one. Um, <laughs> and so I'm just going in with the whites first of all, trying to work out what colours I'm going to be using. So it was a lot of cooler tones on the left side of the dress and it got very warm towards the right side. So I'm using this Light Aqua by Derwent which is absolutely beautiful turquoisey, bright greeny colour but it's very light as well, it's got a lot of white in it. Um, I absolutely love the Derwent colours for all these strange colours that you don't really find in other sets. And then once I've got those base layers down, about three layers of pencil are going with my solvent. Using a synthetic watercolour brush, I've got a whole set of these for really cheap, you don't need to splash out on the brushes. It's just something to kind of spread the solvent around and blend 
And then jumping to the arm section, I always do this, I jump around so much, I get bored of one area and then I go to the other area and then I really crave doing the other area again, so I do jump around a lot. To create this skin tone I'm using a lot of whites for the base colours, making sure to keep that shine on the shoulder nice and clean so that the contrast stays contrasty. Um, and then I'm using a lot of reds and greens, these two are complementary colours, so mixing them together on the skin tone creates a really natural looking shadow. You never want to use blacks and stuff on skin because it will just really deaden up the skin tone. Keep it nice and lively so I use lots of pinks and yellows. Going in with my solvent on my that same brush I used for the dress, I'm just working in really small circular motions, making sure I haven't got too much solvent on the paintbrush because otherwise it will bleed onto the background if we don't want that. Just enough to wet the surface and blend it out. And here is some footage of our absolutely gorgeous English summer. I do love the sound of the rain though when I'm working inside. There's something very cosy about it. Now onto the hair. I was really looking forward to this bit as well because it was so shiny. And Using my Faber-Castell Burnt Ochre for a really nice dark brown base colour. I'm just getting in some initial details. And I just wanted to show you what I think about when I'm drawing hair. So I think of a ribbon, how it has light hitting one side and it's got that one part of it where the light's bouncing off it. And I'm always having that image in my mind when I'm rendering hair like this because we want to keep that one portion of it that's bouncing the light off and the more contrast we can get with the darker areas and that light area, the more shiny the hair's going to look. So I'm always having that image of the ribbon in my head and trying to darken up both sides and leaving that middle section really nice and bright. I'm trying not to go over with too many colours on that middle section to keep it bright and using lots of yellows and greens and reds to render this lovely hair colour. And now I'm jumping straight onto Jameson who very sadly passed away at the age of 14 which really touched me because my dog passed away at around the same time also at the age of 14 and there's something about older dogs eyes they just have the most beautiful soul in them it's like they've seen so much and they've loved their humans so much and it just shows so much in their eyes so I absolutely love drawing Jameson. Annoyingly I don't have too much footage of drawing Jameson but a lot of whites and ochres and yellows went into his fur. I love drawing this fur colour because there's lots of colours you wouldn't expect like greens for example in the shadows. So guys we've hit a uh, pit stop shall we say. Um, <laughs> we have got this basically whole dress to do and this is how much white I have left. My trusty Derwent white. So the new rule is that I'm not going to be sharpening any more white pencils <laughs> unless it's absolutely necessary. The good thing about using the solvent though is that you don't really need extra sharp pencils to get detail because you can then just go in with a paintbrush to kind of detail things out. So for this dress what I'm trying to kind of think through is which parts are warm and which parts are cool and because this material is quite see-through especially in these areas that are entering into the background I'm using that warm grey and then that gives the effect that it's translucent because the warmth of the background with the greens that looks like it's kind of half coming through that material but not fully and then I'm picking out where the peachy tones are so there's a lot of pink here like peachy pink and in these bits there was a lot of blues and greens green and pink tend to look really nice when you put them together because they're complementary colors so that's been useful in some parts of this dress I feel like my brain is not actually working today. <laughs> I just realised how hard that was to put together a sentence. I've been drawing for, I think yesterday it was 14 hours, the day before it was 12 hours. And I've just got up at 6 again to start again. But yeah, that's my main thought process for this dress. It's been really therapeutic to draw. And I'm just taking it shape by shape. If I was to look at this and just like get really overwhelmed, because it looks like it's a really confusing area, like there's so much to do. So I'm just literally taking it shape by shape, rather than trying to think of it as like a whole dress. And just try and think about what colours I can see where. You kind of have to become a colour hunter. <laughs> You're trying to hunt out those really subtle colours within the material. Because if we were to just use greys and whites, it would look really flat and uninteresting. So I'm trying to hunt out those tones, hunt out those colours. And if it's if it's an area that looks cool, I'm using <laughs> I don't know why I always say cool like that, cool. It's because if I did it in my proper voice, it would be like cool. But anyway, I'm finding the cool areas and using blues and cool greys 
And then um, in the warm areas, I'm using a peachy color. The Caran d'Ache Burnt Ochre, which is like a really nice pinky peach color. And then going over those warm areas, wherever I can see that pinky warm tone. And it's just given a lot of um, color difference and interest to this dress. And then I take my solvent. I'm using an angled brush at the moment just because it can cover more area on the dress. And then I just, because this was already a bit wet, it's blending out really easy. I just love this technique so much. I think it's my favourite. When you have like the colour understanding and the composition understanding, it doesn't really matter what medium you use, it's just kind of what you're drawn to. And I definitely find myself being drawn to this method. So it almost just feels like you're painting. And I really want to learn oil painting. I do some here and there, but I just never really had the time to like really devote myself to it. And I feel like this is almost like oil painting because it turns because the wax, sorry, the pencils are wax based and oil based. When you add the solvent, it becomes a kind of oily mixture. Kind of like oil paint, but it dries really fast. So you're getting the best of a lot of worlds. There's no mess with this either, really. Don't have to pack away at the end of the day. Being really careful as I come near the edges here because it can cause um, running on the edges and it'll be obvious. So I almost don't actually take it right up to the edge there, I just tease it towards the edge. These are just really cheap watercolour brushes, synthetic brushes. I don't use any animal hair brushes. I feel like this technique kind of frees up. With colour pencils you're normally working very rigidly and loads of layers but this using the solvent with it almost frees up a lot of time and just like the whole process feels a bit freer because you can then go over that what you've just made wet with a pencil and you can just as easy go over it it's actually easier to get more standing out colors when the paper's wet and then you can just keep blending until you're happy the only thing is once it's dry, you can't make it wet again because it's really dried and solidified into that paper. So you'd have to do another layer over the top if you wanted to blend out the layer again once you've used the solvent already, which doesn't really bother me because I just do all the blending like area by area. You can also like bring your finger into it, get a really smooth effect when it's like half dry. Kind of smudging it in. I've done that quite a lot on the dress. I've been thinking about edges a lot lately. Contrasting a, sh a sharp edge against a soft edge. It can really bring a lot of life to the portrait. I'm always thinking about contrasts. Can you contrast a warm colour with a, a cool colour? Anyway, you can put in these contrasts, it's going to really bring things to life. Blending out this ribbony bit that I did yesterday. See if I was to try and use coloured pencils alone to get that nice smooth texture, you'd have to do so many layers to burnish the paper. But with the solvent you can just blend it out like it's paint and get rid of all the tooth of the paper. Which I really enjoy because I hate the tooth of pastel mat, especially with coloured pencils. So I've cleaned off my brush by dipping it back in the solvent and then I'm going back into the white area here. Whenever there's a big colour difference or tone difference, I'll just rinse off the brush first. You know you haven't done quite enough layers when there's a bit of toothiness. So I just pick back up the pencil and just go straight over the top, giving it a bit more pigment to kind of blend with. And then you'll have the nice soft look. usually takes about two to three layers of pencil before you can get that nice smooth blend with the solvent. So that's how many I tend to do. Jumping around again, I'm going on to her face now, which it was really fun because the shadow was kind of 
setting all of those skin tones alight, like just like it was on the arm with all the reds. It was making them all so saturated and bright. And Normally with shadows, our brain will say, just use some black because that's the darkest colour, but in reality, it's normally the shadows are setting those colours alight and creating really saturated tones. Uh, my boyfriend came to the rescue with a white pencil from Hobbycraft. <laughs> I had to send him to get me one. And thankfully they had a white from Faber-Castell, which is always a great pencil to have. So I was able to complete the dress without worrying about running out of white. And now we're on to the final touches, putting in Jameson's whiskers as they were the very top things to do, they were overlapping the arm. And I was almost ready to be complete. I finished the rest of the dress the night before, so I didn't have any footage of that, but here is the whole piece all done. I'm just using a big brush here to get rid of any bits on the surface that might be lingering around um, before I wrapped it up in its mount and cellophane bag. This is a custom made mount from my framer, so it's a professional acid free mount that won't yellow over time and that's really important when you're looking at getting mounts for your work. If it's not acid free it will start to yellow. Now onto one of my favourite parts of the process, wrapping it all up ready to send. I'm just writing out my certificate of authenticity and a little note for my client and I always include a few business cards in my note so they can give it to their friends or just have it for the records. Um, and now I'm getting a bit creative with some peppercorns that are dried out. And I always look forward to this bit, the pouring of the hot wax ready to stamp. Oh, it's so satisfying. I got these uh, wax stamps off Amazon and one of them is a branded one. So I sent them my logo and they put it on a wax stamp. I'll leave the link in the description to where I got mine from because it's really good quality. And very carefully slide in the drawing into the cellophane bag with the backing board. My framer makes these for me as well, so it's all the right size and everything, so it's a really easy way of doing it. And then taping the cellophane to the back and doing my wax stamp for my certificate of authenticity. This is my branded wax stamp. That's the best bit, pulling it off. <laughs> and then I like to decorate it with some ribbon. I have all different kinds of ribbon and colours and stuff that I choose depending on the commission. Because this was a lovely white wedding dress, I thought the white one was very fitting. I get these ribbons from Hobbycraft or online. I usually do redo these bows about 10 times until they're perfect. <laughs> I'm a painful perfectionist, but I really love to get creative with the packaging because it's just like an extra level of specialness just add even more of a personal touch to it and i use that same colored ribbon for the outside packaging once wrapped in white tissue paper which is also acid free can't be too careful <laughs> and lastly the slightly nerve-wracking goodbye to the parcel which is on its way to america and you've just got to pray that it gets there in one piece <laughs> thank you for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video Oh, and I also forgot, if you want exclusive content and long drawing tutorials, head over to my Patreon at Grace Murray Art. And I've also got lots of goodies on my website if you head over there for budding artists and commission artists alike. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. And I wish you all happy drawing.